Ahoy there, Epic Plasma Gamers! Welcome back to our devlog series on Throwbro, a Game Boy style platformer about an angry dude who throws things at people. Is the intro getting better? I can't tell. We made a ton of progress on Throwbro the last few weeks. We managed to nearly complete the first world, get pretty far on the second world, and finish our game's first boss, the Green Golem. Now this is all fine and good, but as my Meemaw always said, the only thing better than a game with one boss is a game with more than one boss. Or something to that effect. So we started off by conceptualizing the boss. I originally thought a rhino boss would be a really cool way to close off the cave world, but Dagon and some others convinced me not to. Since we've been featuring the bat enemy so much in the cave levels, we instead opted to make a bat boss. As per usual, I procrastinated the coding stuff by starting with the art. But I'm glad I did this time because working on the sprite gave me ideas for different attacks the boss could have. Here's how the idle animation turned out. It's looking real good. So just like the green golem which we showed off a few devlogs ago, this boss which we're naming the winged wraith consists of a few simple attacks to become less simple as the fight continues. First up I made a swooping attack where she swoops at the player. Who's writing these scripts? Next up we have a dashing attack, and I must say, while it looks super simple, this attack was one of my proudest moments as a game developer, because I realized that I had subconsciously prepared players for this attack throughout the whole cave world. In the first level you are introduced to the bats and learn that they glow green right before dashing. Of course they were already green before that, but you get the point. Later you meet the ram enemy, which creates a block when bumping into a wall. This all builds up to the winged wraith, where she does all of those things. She turns green, charges at you, and then spawns a block when hitting the wall. I also added some extra difficulty by making stalactites fall when she hits the wall. Next up we have the shooting attack where the bat throws shards in all directions while moving across the top of the level. You then have to avoid them on the ground level. I built upon this even more with the final attack where she flies up out of view, and then it begins to rain shards that you have to evade. Here's a small preview of how the attacks turn out together. While it gave me an immense sense of satisfaction to have these attacks done, there was still a lot left to do. I added this intro animation where the UFO from before goes and pokes the bat and wakes her up. While this still needs some work, I'm really happy with how it turned out so far. Something else I thought was necessary was a cool death animation. I started to think about another bat boss, second best after mine. <clears throat> the Vaz bat from Pikmin 3 has a cool animation where it flies into a light bulb and then falls to the ground. So I copied it. Hey, Nintendo doesn't own bats. Here you can see my rendition where the bat flies up towards the center of the arena and then gives up. I didn't actually make it fly into the light bulb, but it kind of looks like it from some angles. Now as cool as this is, I also added another optional boss in real life, and it's me. Don't worry, you can avoid this battle by becoming an epic plasma gamer. Oh, how do you become an epic plasma gamer? All you have to do is click that subscribe button and you can escape my wrath. Alright, back to Thrubro. Aside from this bat boss, I did some other things to finish off the cave that are also pretty cool. For starters, I made a world map for the cave. It's complete with all the amenities. Ground, higher ground, a path, stalactites, and little pebbles on the ground. It feels super good to play all the new levels from the world map. As a refresher for new Plasma Gamers, our current formula for each world is to have 5 levels including the boss battle, and then finishing it off with an optional level that you can unlock by collecting all the puzzle pieces. Here is this world's bonus level. It starts off similar to the previous one with a bunch of mushrooms, however I spiced it up by adding challenges from the previous levels all around. I brought back the moving saws, the javelins, and a saw that you have to use a javelin to avoid. The rest of the level is more combinations of those as well as other challenges from the cave. It all ends with falling platforms and moving saws to avoid. And on that note, the cave world is complete aside from a few small touches. It's been really fun to work on. In the next episode, we'll be starting the next world, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let us know what your thoughts are on the cave, and stay epic.